Thank, thank you for your presentation. Uh, even though we all recognize it is slanted, you've got your perspective. I'm sure Amy Baldwin would have a different one. But I would like to have you address or, or tell us, does your bill or any of the bills address what we're going to do to stop the rise in health care costs? This bill apparently does do something about that. Does your bill do that? Does your bill do anything to address the a person involved in medical care in this community who doesn't render a single bit of services to a patient being paid $42 million a year? Does your bill address what we're going to do about the rising cost of insurance. My health insurance premium for my family is $20,000 a year, and that's a high savings account. Uh, we, in addition to that, spend thousands of dollars a year to pay for that. We run a small business. My secretary's uh, compensation, what I pay for her insurance coverage, is about $8 an hour, about 40% of what her salary is. Now, I could give her an $8 an hour increase if I didn't provide insurance. I'd love to pay 8% as opposed to 40%. Does your bill address any of those issues? Yes, in a very different way than what this bill does. There's essentially two ways to go about doing it. There is this kind of a system where the government has to have more of an intimate role in allocating and managing costs and through um, different rules and practices, it tries to squeeze out what it deems to be expensive care. The problem with that is it, it, it displaces the ability for physicians to customize care of their patients. Everybody's unique and different. Everybody has different problems. And in my opinion, you want to have the doctor be given the kinds of discretion to customize care of that person. And if you have these rules written by the Institute of Comparative Effectiveness in Washington, that are designing standards saying what will and will not be paid for, good care goes un unheeded. So let me give you an example. Uh, my mother-in-law, good example. She she gets she gets cancer a lot. She had uh, melanoma in her 20s, breast cancer in her 50s, now is fighting stage 3 ovarian. The typical stuff didn't work. The, 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 the radiation, chemo didn't work. Her doctor went outside the box, thought of a new drug called Avastin, works for some other forms of cancers, and it's working really well. If she was a British citizen, can't have it. They don't let you have it. You can't even pay for it out of, out of pocket. There's big appeals that are occurring right now to try and get a Vastin. The point I'm trying to make is you don't want to have a situation where some bureaucracy is in the, it makes a decision as to what is and is not allowed. How do I address it? A number of things. Number one, I think tort reform is a big issue. Tort reform and medical liability reform. <laughs> premiums doctors pay is the defensive medicine that's practiced to avoid that future possible lawsuit. The duplication of tests, the battery of extra services that are, that are overutilized. But most importantly, I think it's transparency. Uh, I, it took me years to find out these numbers, but just the price of a MRI in the Milwaukee metro area costs anywhere from 400 bucks to $5,000 for the same MRI. The price of bypass, $47,000 to $100,000. Massive health inflation. Providers can charge and charge and charge. You know why? Because we pay it. And we really don't know what things cost and who's good and who's bad. So I propose a whole new system of metrics and transparency. Apples to apples comparisons across the economy, across the country, on what things cost so we know it ahead of time, who's good and who's bad, so that we can reward those high value providers so that the providers, doctors, hospitals, insurance companies compete against each other for our business because we have that information on an apples-to-apples -apples basis as to what they're charging us, what it costs, and who does the best job. We don't have that kind of price and quality competition in healthcare today. It needs to be inserted into healthcare today. And I think you need to have insurance that rewards that kind of best value healthcare delivery system. It's more of a patient-centered system. And for the system that I'm talking about to occur, to exist, to survive, at the nucleus of it, the decision maker's got to be the patient and the doctor. Right now, we have too many HMO bureaucrats meddling in those decisions, and I want to fix that. I don't want to turn it over to some government bureaucrat meddling in the decisions. You want, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, the patient and the doctor as the primary decision makers with real information, 
real transparency, good tort reform, and electronic records, which, which are done in the right way, to get at this health inflation. To me, I think that's a huge part of it. Go to Dean, go to Mercy, and ask him, can you just tell me what this procedure is going to cost me ahead of time? Good luck with that. I mean, I've tried that. Uh, no offense to them, it's just, it's, it's just the way the system works today. And so that's why I'm saying, just because I don't like this bill, doesn't mean that I don't think we should fix the problems. There are real problems, and I just identified a few that we need to fix. Um, Please leave. <laughs> 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 